Today we're diving into something really cool. OpenAI just released two massive open source GPT style models. Open source meaning you can download them on your computer and use them for free and privately. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to do that and connect them to NAN so you can use them in your AI agents and automations. These models are free, powerful, and completely open. So if you ever wanted GPT like power without the API fees or black box behavior, this is it. So these models are part of the GPT OSS project, which stands for GPT Open Source Series. And they were released by OpenAI under an open license. We're talking full weights, full transparency. You got GPT OSS 20B, a smaller, faster model with great performance for chat and light reasoning. And GPT OSS 120B, a massive 120 billion parameter model meant to rival GPT-4 in tasks like summarization, coding, and multi-step reasoning. What makes this a big deal is, well, it's open. No more lockdown APIs, no rate limits. You can run these locally with the right setup and a beefy GPU. For today, we'll use the 20 billion parameter model because that's probably all my MacBook can handle. Performance wise, they're surprisingly solid, especially for tool calling, memory tasks, and workflows where speed and costs matter more than absolute cutting edge accuracy. And just to nerd out for a second, these models use a smart architecture called mixture of experts, which means they don't have to activate all 120 billion parameters at once. For example, GPT-120B only uses about 5.1 billion parameters per token, making it way more efficient. They also support up to 128,000 tokens of context, which is great for documents or memory heavy workflows. Basically, you're getting a huge model that runs faster and cheaper than you'd expect. Now for us NAN people, this is kind of a dream come true. We can now run a serious language model without worrying about API token costs, with full control over the context window and outputs, and with the ability to self-host, fine tune, or use a third party provider like Open Router. This means your AI agents and NAN can now be cheaper to run, more private, and better tuned for specific workflows like summarizing docs, parsing emails, or calling tools. So let me show you how to wire it up. If you want to skip the local setup and just use the models through the Open Router API, skip to this timestamp. So imagine this big container is your computer. We're going to set up two virtual environments on your computer. One is Docker, and that's for NAN, and the other is a Llama, which will host our OpenAI model. So go to docker.com and download Docker Desktop, and go to olama.com and download Olama. Once you're done installing these, Docker will look like this, and Olama will look like this. In Olama, choose the GPT OSS 20B from the list and send a message so the model starts downloading. In the description, I'll leave a link so you can download this file onto your computer. This is a Docker Compose file, which basically is like a recipe that tells Docker, hey, these are the services I want to start, and this is how I want them configured. So this part here is for NAN, and this part here is for Postgres, which is basically just a database that will store your NAN data locally. Once you download that onto your desktop, open up a terminal and navigate into your desktop. So CD desktop. Then navigate into the folder that has that Docker Compose file. So in my case, I'll do CD NAN Docker. Then you can run Docker Compose up. And this tells Docker to start up those services within the Docker Compose file. In Docker Desktop, you'll see these green dots if everything started successfully. Click into the NAN OSS and you'll see this localhost link. Click that. And here's our NAN instance. Now we'll hook up Olama. So we need to create a workflow and we'll choose the AI agent node, which will create this AI agent that we can chat with, but there's gonna be an error because we don't have a model connected. It needs this brain to understand what we're saying. So to add a model, we're going to click this plus icon under chat model and search for the Olama chat model. We need to tell this node where it can find Olama on our computer. So click create new credential and instead of localhost, you'll do host.docker.internal. Now this is what our base URL should look like. When you click save, you'll see connection tested successfully. So now we'll choose the GPT OSS model, assuming it's done downloading. Let's try sending another chat and boom, we get a response back directly from the model running on our machine. No API key, no cost and completely private. Also, if you don't want to host these models locally, but still want to try them out, there's an easy alternative, Open Router. It lets you use these models through a cloud API, super handy if you're on a lightweight machine or just want to test fast. You'll create an account, add some credits, 
and then create an API key here. Copy your API key and put it somewhere secure because you won't be able to see it again after you close this modal. And back in NAN, you'll switch out the Olama chat model for an open router chat model. So remove this, search open router chat model, and then click create new credential, paste your API key, save, and now you can choose any one of these models here. We'll select the OSS 20B free. Now we'll send a chat. And there we go. So you can use this model through Olama or Open Router. And for this video, I'm just going to stick with Olama. So I'll refresh here without saving. And now we have our Olama chat model back. All right, now that everything's wired up and working, let's actually put this model to the test. First, we'll start with some basic prompts just to see how it thinks and responds. Then we'll get a feel for how the model behaves. We'll build a simple NAN automation, something practical like summarizing info and sending it via email so that we can see how it does with tools. Here's the first question. What are the key differences between GPT OSS and GPT-4? Okay, we've got our response here and first impressions, it looks very solid. It's long, it's thorough. It does have a lot of table usage. I'm not sure what that's about. I guess this model likes tables, but it's pretty solid for a lightweight model that you can run locally. Let's try something else. Write a tweet thread summarizing the history of artificial intelligence. I can definitely feel the impact of this model on my computer. It's a bit laggy. If I go to the um, activity monitor, you see it's using a lot of the RAM I have. And again, the model gives us a pretty solid response with structured output broken into bullets. This could totally be used in a content workflow. It goes all the way from 1943 up to 2024. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Now let's take this one step further by giving the model the ability to call tools inside of our workflow. So instead of just answering a question and stopping there, now it can look someone up in our contact database and send them an email automatically. This is our contact database. We've got a first name, a last name, and an email all within Google Sheets. So back in NAN, I've hooked up this Google Sheets tool that can be used by the agent to access this contact database. And before we add the email tool, we're going to test this out by asking, what's Kyle's email? It says, I'm sorry, I can't help with that. So maybe let's give the agent a system prompt to help it out. I've said, you are a helpful assistant. You have access to the Google Sheets tool to find contact information. Now let's give it another try. There it goes. It used the Sheets tool. And it says, Kyle's email is codefocuschannel at gmail. Awesome. It worked. I'm adding in the email tool. I've connected the credential. And if you're unsure how to do this, I have a whole video about it that I'll link here. Anyway, for these fields, I'm going to let the model decide what to put so we can see if it's smart enough to grab the, per the person's contact information and use it in this field. Let the model define this parameter. And I'm going to do that for the subject and message too, so that it'll add in here whatever we want it to when prompting. Also make this email type text. Let's rename this tool. Let's rename this tool to get contact and this tool to get or send email. Now we'll update the system message like so. If the user mentions a person's name, use the get contact tool to find their email address. Then write a clear and concise subject and message to send it using the send email tool. It is time to test. Let's go back, reset the chat and paste this in. Tell Kyle about the new open source GPT OSS models and why they're useful for real estate agents. Keep it short and include a link to the download page. Send that off. Got the contact information. It's probably generating that email right now. Sent the email. Now it's figuring out what to tell us as a response. It used that tool twice. I wonder what that was about. Three times. Looks like it's sending multiple emails. So we got four emails from the model, five emails. That's interesting. Maybe it's, uh, it's having some trouble here. Let's uh, stop it. So I'll be honest, I just spent like 10 minutes testing different things, trying to get this to only send one email. It just kept sending multiple no matter how I updated the system prompt. So I ended up looking at the input given to the model after the email tool. And at the end of it, you can see this tool section attached. Um, basically showing the model that this tool was used. But for some reason, the model wasn't smart enough to know it should stop. So I found out you have to be extremely explicit in writing the system prompt. And so I clearly stated each step. And this third one says, if the email hasn't already been sent, send an email using the tool. I structured the sent like this because that's exactly how it's structured 
here. And then I added the node after the agent that will just send us a success email sent message. So let's test this out. Tell John there's a meeting at 4 p.m. Sending it. And now it should stop. Yeah, okay, so it sent two emails again. So this just isn't working. If you want to send emails or do a complex tool agent, you probably don't wanna use the 20 billion parameter uh, model. You probably wanna use the 120 billion parameter model. If you're just doing something simple or generating content, you can definitely get away with using the 20 billion. My computer is definitely not strong enough for the 120 billion parameter. So let's remove this Olama and add back the open router. All right, got our credential, got the, um, we'll choose the OSS 120B and we'll have to go and add some credits to my account. Okay, I'm adding $5 here. There we go. Now we'll give this a whirl. Tell John there's a meeting at 4 p.m. There we go, sending email. Beautiful, email sent only one time. Refresh, meeting at 4 p.m., John. Best regards, beautiful. We'll do one more test and say, Email Kyle a quick summary of that new AI regulation bill that passed. Keep it professional and include a link to the news article. Send that off. There we go. Spending a bit more time this time around thinking. It's probably out researching that new article or that new bill and coming up with that link for the news article. Okay. Got the contact. Sent the email. Done. Email sent. Let's check it out. Brief summary. New AI regulation bill passed. Great subject, looks solid. And then here's a link. The link is not a thing. So I don't know what that's about. <laughs> uh, and then best regards, you can probably tell it to sign off with a specific name. So yeah, but I'm really glad we tested this out and I could show you both the benefits of these models and some of the limitations when it comes to building automations. If you guys enjoyed this and want to be a part of a community with a bunch of other AI enthusiasts, including myself, I have a free community linked in the description. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more AI automation content. I'll see you in the next video.